Good morning, champions. Welcome to the assembly of the God begotten. You're not clapping, it's like you don't believe you are God begotten. <laughs> yes, you've been begotten of Yahweh. You cannot carry yourself otherwise. Your father is God, not one of the gods, not the God of Itam, not the God of Anang. Your father is the sovereign monarch of the entire universe. So you can celebrate him like you understand you are royalty. Don't allow anything to convince you otherwise. You are royalty. Hallelujah. So we are still examining what it means to be, to be begotten of this God who is love. And one thing we've established so far along this series is that God is interested in our relationships. He's interested in how we relate with each other. He's, in, he's interested in how we talk, how we, how we look at each other, how we interact with each other. Today, I just want you to turn to your neighbor and be the first preacher. And say, remember that our neighbor? Neighbor? Do you know that? Loving God and loving people is the most important thing you will ever do in this life absolutely loving God and loving people is the most important thing you and I will ever do in this life it doesn't matter whether we build skyscrapers or design new aircraft or whatever else we can come up with the most the single most important thing you and I will ever be able to do in this life when it has to do with God and eternity is loving God and loving people so we go to the text we've been handling last week I introduced Ephesians chapter 1 verse 2, chapter 5 1 and 2 and in addition to our first John 4 7 I won't read the first John 4 7 just keep it there we'll tie it together at the end and then first Corinthians 13 5 Paul's later giving us explanations. Say, imitate God, this Ephesians. Therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children, imitate God because you are God begotten. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. And then 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5, let us to know that this love that we are to live now that we are exhorted to imitate God and live a life of love, this love is not rude. This love is not unmannerly. This love does not act unbecomingly. I'm going to the King James. This love does not behave itself unseemly. Ah. The Apostle Paul uses the absolute Greek, Greek negative in communicating in that very translation. To show you that no matter how you and I try to explain our attitudes, our behaviors, our character away, the love of God in us absolutely does not act, does not behave itself unseemly. Now, you would understand why I'm emphasizing that when you see what unseemly means and what it covers. Today's text literally covers everything from godly living to good manners. To propriety, the standards of living in proper society, to moral codes, to sound judgment in different areas of life that we find ourselves. It's like Paul said one line, and we could stay there for an entire year and we will still be learning. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Now, before I, I jump to what he was talking about. I want us to understand that this was Paul trying to draw our attention. Not just, you know, we are always concerned with who we are on the inside. But this is Paul drawing our attention to, hey, beside who you are on the inside, it matters how people perceive you. It matters how you appear on the outside. It matters how you behave on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of us actually think that there is no, it doesn't make any difference whether we are rude or polite, whether we are ill-mannered or well-behaved as long as we are saved. Well, Paul says it does. 
because the way we live, the way we speak, the way we act, including the way we pray and dress, eat, use our money, pray. You can, if you are looking at me like pray, yes, the Corinthian church prayed in tongues, not because they were interested in speaking to God, but because I needed to let him have acquired some tongues. And so I brought it to church. So that was the Corinthian church. So the way we pray, the way we dress, the way we eat, the way we use our money, even the way we spend our time, does not just reveal who we are, but whose we are. We cannot be our own law and order. That was what Paul was trying to say. Love does not behave itself unseemly. The God begotten is under the law of Christ, and the law of Christ is the law of love. So what was Paul thinking about? What was the Holy Spirit trying to communicate to the church with, by saying love? The love of God in you, the love of God in us, does not behave itself unseemly. To behave unseemly is to act shamefully, dishonorably, indecently, disgracefully, unbecomingly. You do something that is so shocking that someone looks at it is like, hi, that's not what a child of God would have done. Inappropriately, to behave inappropriately, indecorously, you don't have decorum. You, you set your law, you follow it, you do it as you please. To act out of order, to, to behave improperly, to even behave in an ugly manner. The Greek word translated unseemly captures all of these nuances. The love of God in us, I'll try to break it down very quickly because this, this as I studied and, and came trying to understand and explain this, I, re I realized this is just too vast. So I decided to just... Um, pick a sense of it and share today. The love of God in us does not act in a manner worthy of, of or causing shame. Now we live in a world where it's now okay for men to fall in love with men and marry men, women to fall in love with women and marry women, or maybe we did for, for us in this part of the world, we may not go boldly to the marriage part, but we do every other part apart from the marriage part. Paul says that is acting shamefully. That love you are professing is not the love of God. And what's worse, even churches are now explaining that a way that what is happening is a manifestation of love. Such love cannot be characteristic of the God begotten. It is not of God. Romans clearly says, says that the love of God is not willingly offensive. So who you are shows in who you be, how you behave. We cannot be attracted to men, attracted to female, and do the things we're supposed to do with the opposite sex in marriage with similar genders, and then we explain it away and call it God. Today, I didn't draw up a mirror because I discovered, like Paul said, the very things that some people do in secret are too vile and too filthy to be mentioned, to even be mentioned. So in trying to draw up a mirror today, it would... It would touch on very vile and sensitive and filthy topics in trying to give you examples. So what I did instead was that I prayed for us. Prayed that the Holy Spirit will flood our hearts with light and enable us to walk away in consecration and live as sons and daughters of light. So much more that there are things we will not be able to do because we are living in the light. So there will be no mirror today. Let's just keep running. To behave unseemly, Paul said... Or to behave unseemly is to act dishonorably. The love of God is not lacking in honor and integrity. You cannot be disrespectful and you say you are begotten of God. It, is, it doesn't behave in a manner that is dishonoring, embarrassing and ugly. There is a particular industry on the rise these days and all the players and participants need is a device, a phone or a laptop and data. And just like that, the body of Christ, the temple of Christ is submitted to be ravished and dishonored for a fee. Love does not act dishonorably. Hookup is dishonoring the body. Love has nothing to do with sexual immorality, lust or greed. Love honors self. Love honors God. Love honors people in all things and at all times. Love of God does not behave in a way that elicits disgrace. It does not behave in a manner that is considered unpresentable, indecent, or unmentionable. It does not violate the normal moral code of God or the natural order of things and relationships. This year, we, these days, we hear cases of incest 
like you are hearing good morning the love of God in a father cannot propel him to sleep with the daughter the love of God in a brother cannot propel him to defile the sister that is not God at work that is not the love of God at work now this scripture as this very text as I studied and expanded I, the first thing that came to me personally as shock was that this was addressed to believers first Corinthians 13 is addressed to believers so if these things are happening so these are things happening amongst believers and yesterday I walked away from here in school of the Holy Spirit reflecting that Moses was a man who spoke with God first face to face yet Moses was a man of anger so you can be prophesying here you can be speaking you can be so on fire and yet you are rude you are unmannerly you are on you are acting unseemly you're behaving in disgraceful ways you're doing things that are not becoming of the sons and daughters of light the love of god in us does not conduct itself inappropriately there are some some of us these days are so wealthy we are so educated we are so exposed that we no longer feel the need to respect the elderly to behave properly in circumstances that we are placed we the young no longer respects the elderly the executives we are above no longer have regard for those under them because you're doing your job to the young respect is old-fashioned so we live like that as if we're in a chaotic society and we're inside the church the love of god does not conduct itself unbecomingly sometimes we act in a boorish manner and coat it up with religion i was propelled by the holy spirit to tell him my mind keep your mind if your mind is not beautiful keep your mind if your mind is not edifying or i felt late to do that i felt late to say that and what you were you were late to do is indecent is unseemly is offensive to people's delicate sensitivities if you had dismissed having proper manners and behaving gracefully and courteously as the things of this world paul is saying call back your manners and embrace them again because you need it to love as god does and you need it to be an effective ambassador of christ the love of of, of god in us is not ill-mannered is not rude is not crude is not impolite being rude is not being assertive you can be assertive and polite our sky high revelatory knowledge and awareness has left some of us so rude and uncouth that they we live on pleasant tests in the mouths of the people we are trying to win for god i'm coming to win you to christ and yet the way i present this my newfound revelation knowledge that jesus did not even see was in the bible or jesus did not even know will be in the bible is so is so rude that you would rather be everywhere else than bow to such a christ the love of god does not behave unseemly paul understood this and said be ready to speak up and tell anyone everyone why you behave the way you do why you live the way you do but always do it with utmost courtesy do it with gentleness and respect you cannot your love the love of god in you cannot be vulgar it's not god that is speaking through you it cannot be profane we have to come to the place of consecration so much that there are things that cannot absolutely like paul used in the greek translation of that verse that the love of god absolutely does not behave itself unseemly so we have to come to a place where absolutely there are things that we cannot absolutely do because we are begotten of love love it does not behave itself unseemly because love is busy putting others first love is busy treating people with due consideration love is not rude love is not bearish it's not brutish because love cares for others other people's feelings and is concerned for the well-being of others love does not force itself on others because love is concerned with fairness and is sensitive to the culture of other people love is not injurious some of us do our good in a very bad way some of god love is not injurious because love is ever willing to become all things to all men in order to easily win them to christ love is not willingly offensive because love exchanges places with the other person you look at the other person and you're able to put yourself in that person's shoe to understand to try at least to understand what the person is going th going through love is not ill-mannered because love never acts out of its place or character love observes due decorum and good manners love does not behave in an ugly manner 
because love renders to all their due they are due, suitable to time, suitable to place, suitable to person, suitable to the circumstance. I'll leave you with Paul, Paul's, Paul's word for us. Don't forget, they call upon us as the God begotten is to imitate Christ and walk in love. So Paul said, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you may do, live your life in a way that glorifies and honors God. And make sure that you are not an offense to any part of God's assembly over your personal preferences. Do not lead people into sin by your mode of life. For love does not behave itself unseemly. Please rise and let's affirm the word of God this morning. As you speak, I want you to position your heart in consecration. And just tell, your, tell God in your heart, I'm walking away from this place a different man, a different woman. And I'm loving like you do. Say it with me. I am begotten of love to reflect love. The love of God in me does not behave unseemly. I will not hide behind honesty to violate the law of love. I walk daily in submission to the law of Christ. Today, I commit to honoring God, myself, and others in all things and at all times I am a being of love I am not rude boorish or crude I am both empathetic and frank earnest and patient I will not do my good in an abusive way I embrace the pattern of life set by Jesus I am willing to become all things to all men that I may win them to Christ. I am God begotten. Wisdom lives in me. I am not tactless. I said a proper thing at the proper time. I lay aside bitter words, temper tantrums, revenge profanity and insult daily I use my freedom in the service of others I am not a channel of shame and disrespect I am called to imitate Christ and walk in love I have God's nature of love within me my life is governed by love my words are edifying to my listeners. My actions are upbuilding to my recipients. My prayers are not hindered by lovelessness. My emotions, actions, and decisions are regulated by love. I am a constant echo of God's love to those around me just want us to lift up our voices this morning and ask God I help me Lord to walk gracefully in love awaken your love in me Lord help me to love like you do help me to see people like you do help me to talk like you do help me to feel like you do help me to know like you do help me to hear men like you do help me that I owe no man nothing except to love him and seek the best for him. Help me to help your love to find full expression in me. Just open your mouth and begin to talk to your father. Let my lips be filled with words of grace, words of truth, words of love. Set a guard over my mouth and keep me from speaking ugly or hateful words. Let my words be beautiful. Let my words encourage others. May everything I say, may everything I do be beautiful and helpful just keep speaking that to your father and tell him thank you thank you Lord for the privilege to represent you thank you for the privilege to love like you do thank you for the privilege to walk on your behalf